you guys, Xdesign101 here, and uh, sorry for the late continuation of the advanced shop, but I've been pretty busy. I'm also working on a RuneScape replica project that you might have seen in the uh, mobile RuneScape video section of my channel. So if you haven't, roll on over there, maybe check it out. It's starting to get pretty uh, RuneScape-y now that most of the features are in. I just finished adding a whole bunch of new ones, including the two-hand equipped uh, and animations for it. So be prepared for the next update video on that as well. And I'm going to try to at least keep up a, a one video a week tutorial thing instead of this uh, very unusual pattern that I get with because of busyness. Worst comes to worst, I hope to get l more uh, on top of things and less random. There may be occasional random ones, but it depends on spikes in life, right? I'm sure you guys all understand that. <clears throat> so let's just uh, continue on right here with our canvas shop. Let's open up and review quickly. If it let, lets me open up, there we go. Review quickly what we have here. So we have our 10 slots that are reading each slot from the bag in order. So uh, if you're doing this, I'd suggest you have like a maximum slot count of, uh, I don't know, 28, 30 bags bag slots is pretty decent for most games you know what I mean so then you can probably have 30 buttons because right now it's set to 50 it's a bit excessive I don't know if like you could allow that it depends on the kind of game you're making just note that it's the more buttons you have here or when you sell items you could add a little button that's gonna rearrange your items for you here and it'll rearrange the items in your bag thus uh, updating these buttons with new items from your in own inventory uh, but uh, I don't like the way that's working so pretty much I'm just gonna stick with the 10 slot and uh, more or less add more slots later on if we do that but for now remember this is just tutorial so we only need 10 slots working so to start off with our next half of our tutorial here and I <coughs> we're going to uh, quickly rush over to our canvas uh, let's see here the background that's our main background perfect shop items well, that's where we're going to be doing that and then bag items all right excellent so in our shop items we can just go ahead and create a empty game object we want to create two empty game objects one of them we're going to call buy object and then the other one's going to be sell object so basically what these are for is when you go to buy uh, well we already have our sell function here which is more advanced than this current sell function well actually is that even oh yeah it is selling okay even better um, delete this sell object we only need the buy object because we're just doing the buy panel of this at this point um, so basically add a ply blocks so ply blocks I keep hitting this cord here and I'm assuming you guys are hearing some feedback from it so I'm gonna move it sorry about that guys there we go now I won't hit it anymore um, so add ply blocks uh, leave that as is for now um, we're now gonna shape up our section here um, basically in here we're gonna want to add our list menu which is gonna list our buttons which each button will be created based off of a spe specific item that it you will be purchasing so that item will just that button will just get enabled or disabled in different shops that you have and what, what are available to purchase from them super simple because it's just a little if then statement you would run or something nothing entirely difficult so let's do our first quarter with a UI panel actually no we don't need the UI panel 
we can just go ahead and use our scroll view here get our scroll view what is the size of this the width is 565 we'll grab our calculator and divide that Two eighty two point five. Okay. Two eighty two point five is our width that we want for that. Unfortunately, we do not need, I believe, our horizontal. Yeah, that's our horizontal one we don't need. Our vertical ones width is we'll fix that in a second here, but go back to our scroll view. Uh, bring the height up. There we go, and now we can position it to this side of the screen. There we go. Um, now, I'd probably want to shrink this down a little bit actually here. Um, this way we can do the same thing as what we have here, like a little uh, spot for either more buttons or information on how to use the shop in any case um, so what size did I make that one we just copy that scroll view it is negative 55 and height 300 all right Fifty-five. The height looks about right. Not really. Let's try that again, shall we? Scroll view. How is the height three hundred there? But then, whatever, doesn't matter. We'll just get it close enough to what we physically see here. maybe you know 95 that's what it is it is 95 bingo even like I said not perfect screw it 400 okay, I really don't see it being the same but if it is even better I guess I can just do this a little shy but hey whatever um, go to our viewport our content we're gonna want to add a canvas scaler no no a canvas group my bad Grid layout group actually is what we want. There we go, grid layout group. We put that on there, so now when we go into our content and we UI button, there's the button here. Um, let's, let's put that in the center there. Da 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 da. Now we want the cell size to stretch it out. 264 and we'll have this one shrink I'll go to 50 there we go uh, our first button there you go um, so this is scroll view dash Yeah, 
we'll, we'll just go with that. So buy side items, buy items. No, actually, I like items list item. Items purchase list. I, I, I like that better. We're going to go with that. Um, this button is going to be button dash po buy potion. There we go. Potion. And voila. Maybe stretch that up a little here. Bold it new. No. We'll just keep it normal. Fifteen. Sixteen. We'll do sixteen. All right, cool. Um, now this button itself is going to use a on click trigger event script. Do not use the on click. Uh, that's part of the button here. You don't want. You want the actual trigger event script on click. Um, you can add as many params as you want to this by adding the size and then the blocks of what the event is happening so the event of buying this object is going to come out of the buy object here so we throw in the buy object blocks here on click left click and the event name is going to be buy simple as that um, all you need is three parameters the first parameter will be a integer and it's well actually no no it's gonna be string param name param one value is string so it's gonna be the name potion or yeah so we have the one name potion here in our items our second parameter so we keep them as temporary as well um, it's going to be param2. Um, this one we want to be a float. So this is going to be the value that you have to, to spend and or have on you to purchase this item. So let's uh, go to our potion quickly here, see what we valued this at. Uh, 1,075. That's the base sale of the potion. So that's meaning when you sell the potion, we're going to be buying the potion from the player at this cost. So that means I want to make this more expensive when you're buying it yourself. Uh, so 2,000 maybe? We'll just raise it up to 1,700. A little bit more. So let's go back to our button here. Pram to float 1,500. Uh, not don't have to make too much more of the the store. You know what I mean? They're just making some money. And then the third one, you can use this for really anything. So we have the name, and then we have the value going in. So when we want to grab uh, and go into our cell object here we can start developing this and if I remember anything in the process even better um, so create a custom rename it to buy now inside buy we want to check if the player has more than equal param2 which is the name uh, the value in currency so let's go to variables 
temporary float param2 technically I could just do that param2 but you know what for general purposes I think I prefer to actually do it this way so when you read over it you know exactly what it is you're doing without having to go hunting for everything so we'll just param2 this and then let's go to our items amount in bag oh, that's currency yeah amount in bag of self so this is a single player game so we can just drop our player right here boom so if param to his float is more than equal so if it's equal or more to the um, currency in the player's bag then we're going to continue this purchase here and then we'll add an else statement that will set a text somewhere that'll tell us oh you not not enough money kind of thing so that's what that else will do uh, now we could actually start uh, purchasing the item itself so excuse me let's continue here so we're gonna purchase the item so we can go to uh, items I think it is add to bag yep so um, there's many ways we can do this if we want to buy more than one item we could have like um, an input field here where you can input a number and basically if the input field is not equal null uh, it you can take an amount of copies with you um, but uh, we'll do that in a minute so for now we're gonna add one copy of potion to bag slot auto of player again this is a single player solution so you can just drop a player block in there <clears throat> we're now going to remove from bag the amount of currency which was 1500 again from player and uh, that's pretty much it we're checking to see if the currency is that yeah we need to check this okay so then if the currency in the player is more than or equal param2 which is the value yada yada then we'll add the copies potion and ah okay so we're not supposed to be using a uh, potion here we're supposed to be uh, grabbing param2 as a uh, string for in here uh, da, 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 param2 no no as a uh, float damn it integer integer yes okay param2 as integer so uh, basically uh, even though it's a float we could t still take a float in as an integer and it should have the general effects that we need without causing any interruption so we should be fine um, we also need our game object we need to go to items we need to grab item and we need to go back into variable local variable no temporary variable game object unity no system object Add copies of item. What block did I use before? Um, Cause we don't want to get a temporary system object. 
add copy of item param add copies of item da 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 da, da. Hmm. So now we're trying to get that param uh, one, but it won't let me grab param one from here. Naturally, I need uh, it must be here. See, like I normally would put item in here, and then you should be able to put temp game object in there or as game object maybe as game object no as play blocks no no integer as string ah we could as string it all right cool there we go there we go um That's that's what it is we need. Now we can go back to variables and grab our temp string param one. So yeah, there we go. We need as string with the item block and then param one as string again, or you can just drop in param one. You know, I'm surprised. Okay, so you don't need the ice string block, so that's really weird how it didn't work at first, but anyway, if you have that issue, do what I just did, use the ice string, put it in, and then replace by just adding the temporary string block in the uh, item block that you first get from the item. So now that that's done, that's good to go. Um, if we actually go to buy the item now, which definitely can do ah uh, we need to start off with this shop uh, disabled to be honest also just gonna cast a whole bunch of errors because the player is not ready okay so now if we click on the potion and buy it we now have the potion and then we can sell it and then we can buy it how much money does my character even have right now um, no player yes there is no currency oh that would be in the bag here Ah, currency a thousand seven hundred, a thousand and five. So, I sell this back. My currency went back up. I can. If I look at my player, the item is not being purchased anymore. I have the money. Okay, let's try that one more time. I'll make sure to see how much money I have right away before I even do this. So, player. We are starting off with zero currency. So that there is already a singular problem. Because as soon as we click this, it gives us the potion, which it shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Anywho, um, let's continue this off by, uh, okay, we don't have an event in there. Our main event is this casting to buy param one potion, param two, 1500. All right, cool. Our buy object here. Uh, you know what? We should uh, probably be doing this this way. Um, if currency in bag of player is more than equal param two, that would probably make more sense. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So let's grab our float here. Param two. And voila. There is the buy option. Very simple. So pretty much you would duplicate this button multiple times and just change in here the param one, the name, the string, the potion, and then the float value of 1,500 to that, and then uh, it'll purchase the item right away. Uh, there's multiple ways where you could actually prevent it from purchasing the item right away. You could actually um, create some local variables within this shop here um, and uh, every time you click on an item it it'll set the, the those parameters to the name and the, the value and the what and any of the parameters you set here it'll set those parameters to the the given uh, local variables that you give them within this uh, buy button so if you wanted to do that you would just uh, replace these here with some uh, set local variable function so you'll set local variable item name uh, to param1 and then set local variable uh, item amount param2 uh, this way when you look at it every time you click on those buttons uh, you can actually uh, gather information on that item now so we can uh, start doing that if we wanted to gather information on the item um, generally already right now um, it is functional purchase but I guess it's not really what you would want so let's go ahead and uh, add a little uh, another menu here another scroll view so let's duplicate this scroll view we'll call it uh, item description I guess we'll need purchase in there as well item purchase description there you go uh, drag that at this half of Take out the button here. Content button layout. Uh, delete that button. We don't need the grid layout either. Remove. Now I'm just going to throw a text in here. This text will get named description. text in here maybe or here uh, a text within this one huh. uh, 
ba ba. Thinking. Maybe not in the viewport at all. We'll have the name. No, no, we'll have it in here anyway. Okay, so we'll just text, 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 uh, name. Now, if I'm clicked on this text, I want to raise the width of this. To several lines. There we go, that's nice. And then we'll just put this right up in here as the name. Keep it short and small, just like that. Boom shakalaka. Item description. So now in our by object, we'll want to duplicate that by object, actually, because that by object is still going to be used to buy our object more or less but this by object uh, will still be called by object uh, well, we'll call this one um, set by object call it that there you go so we now want to go to our button again and we want to go to our set by object instead here that set by object right here we'll still be grabbing by or we'll call it set by now go to this by object again rename it set by and we're going to canvas no on the the by object we can just add our String here, which will be item name and then our integer, which would be item amount. <coughs> so we'll go to our variables here, set local variable. Item name, so we'll set that item name quickly to param1 as string. So we need to grab our as uh, apply blocks first here. So as string as apply blocks, and we can just duplicate this, drop uh, param2 in there instead, and call this item amount. Now delete this. We want to actually move these into here. We don't actually need that because uh, we're setting these within the self object, the the the, the set by object. Yeah, and then um, actually we should probably be setting this on uh, this object here. So just drag this object here, go into here, set the int item amount, and then our string item name. Boom. It'd be better if we stored it in the by objects. This way, it's easier to cache out on its uh, variables easier. 
so we can remove them from here. No matter what, there's not going to be an else. It's always going to want to set, so we're good on that for the set by. There we go. Now, if we go and test this out here by saving, press play, and we will check to see if when we click on the uh, button potion here, is it going to set to our buy object? We click on potion. It does not seem to be doing that. Um, did I change this to set buy? Okay, the buy object. It's called set buy. Oh yeah, I have no currency, that's why it won't let me do it. Um, let's go to my player here, yada yada. NPCs, character one. On state, enter. And we're gonna add some coin to it. Items, add to bag, 5,000. Just save that, run the test again. Open up our canvas here, buy object. As you can see, it is setting the amount um, because I have this. Uh, we don't actually need to be casting this um, if we have enough money, because that's kind of ridiculous. Just saying. Because um, to view the item's description and whether or not the item is you know, effective to us, we shouldn't need to check to see if we have the money for it first, because we're just kind of grabbing information from the item such um, but when we actually use the buy button then it's going to use the buy object which is which what we're going to do now is we're going to buy copy uh, um, copies of item we want to go to variables here and we want our name which is a string local variable as string and that's going to be called item name in self and then we want our float and our integer here which will be item amount in self as integer and it'll be removing from player the else will be to set the description to uh, it'll remove the the text of the description and it'll just tell you that uh, you don't have the sufficient funds for it uh, so let's go to our GUI to the top here set text in uh, description just drag the description there there you go and then this is good to go we then want to go back to our set by object we actually want to set the description now um, so again set text do 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 set text um, we'll grab the text by getting the character no we gotta go to common uh, we need to get property block and then we need to get the property from uh, this text here uh, 
So we need a string, obviously, for that to work, because, yeah. Now, get property. Uh, the property we are looking for to get, it's part of an item. So I should drop an item in there to get what I need. So let's see here, items, 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 items. Here we go, items. Let's just drop a potion in here for now. When we click this drop down, it'll give us this stuff here. We're looking for item description. Oh, don't tell me they have everything but the description. Fantastic. Enabled equip slot. Okay, uh, floor art. We don't need that item. The base value. It's like it's giving me everything but the minimum, the min currency. It's giving me everything but what I want. The ply blocks. Name. No, it, it should be here. It would have to say description, but there isn't one. Unfortunate. Okay, so uh, it looks like we'll be adding uh, a new uh, parameter to that uh, purchase button here, which would be param3, which I guess would be the description. Let's put param3, it'll be string, and now we want to go to our potion here, grab our description, uh, write the description in here to kind of get the layout of it as such, and then uh, come back into this button here, and then just paste it into parameter 3 as such. So now we can actually just grab Ram three as string on self new. We want description. We also want to set the text for name, which would be param one on text name. There we go. So everything's being set now when we click on the initial button. So when you copy this you're really just changing the parameters you're sending and that's it you don't need to change any of this this is now complete just always change these parameters their value to suit the item uh... what else now now when we go into our buy object it'll say not enough gold yada yada uh -huh. Uh, not enough gold, blah, 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 blah. We pretty much just need a buy button to activate that, uh, the purchase, really. So uh, let's go ahead and add a buy button to our shop here. A purchase button, UI button. Actually, you know what? Yeah, no, I'm just gonna put it down there. That works. Boom shakalaka. Right, actually, down the middle here. Maybe a little bit taller for the button. There we go. And we'll call this. Buy. Set this to 16. Button. Buy. This one you can just use a simple on click and uh, drag in the buy object function, apply game, and blocks, and then just type in buy. So boom. Now when you press this particular button, it's gonna 
cast everything that's in here so it's going to check if the player's currency is more than the requested currency it's if so it's going to give us the item and remove the currency i actually want to remove the currency then give the item first this way uh, you can't kind of make a dupe by clicking the button twice really quick you could also disable the button for a few seconds and then uh, do a trigger event that'll re-enable the button after one the, the buy button after one second this way you can't they can really stop duping like crazy that that would be a lot harder for you to dupe through that um, <coughs> basically this is working flawlessly now so if we uh, just uh, disable this apply we can now test this out for you sorry for the long video guys but you know, I like to be descriptive and I like to have fun with it. Uh, all you really have to do is just create a, a new button inside uh, your RPG UI or in any of your UI to enable and disable the canvas, really. That's about it. So, what we're going to do is we're now going to click this. It sets the name of our potion, it's telling us the information here in a very poor scheme. You can add more parameters for like different portions. So like you could have parameter stats of the item. So that it'll do like the purchase price and the sell price and how much HP it'll do. And then you could have the general information as well as the name so that it kind of separates the two without clumping them together this way, which would also work. Now that I have set the information, if I click the buy button, as you can see, it is buying. Um, the variable could not be found param2. I think I must have left a parameter inside the uh, buy object. Yes, that is it. Um, it's item amount we're checking in self. We want to check the item amount in self. Now it's going to work flawlessly. Okay. Um, last test, and we're done, guys. That is our full, complete shop item. All you have to do is just, like I said, copy this button, change the parameters values, and then when you click on it, it'll set to those new parameter values that you set with that particular button. And you click buy. You now have the item. You can click on that buy item. You can click sell. And then you can click buy again. And then sell. You know what I mean? Like it's this is a very flawless like advanced shop it checks the items in your bag it's in your inventory you just click that boom I love it uh, this is probably the best uh, shop I've ever created I've made many shops for a few different projects and I am definitely the most satisfied with this one I took the most time as well to come up with it so uh, I hope you guys like it uh, just for simplicity purposes I will create a new button here change the parameter here to uh, small potion is that what it's called yeah just so you know what that button's name is and then simple as just typing small here I don't even need to uh, I'm not even gonna I'm just gonna change uh, this small potion this is for test change that description right there change the value to two uh, 750 boom so now that that's like that we can just quickly do this run the game you see how quick it was for me to just create a new shop item right then and there as long as the items already in the game when you uh, open back into the shop here this button should be here but why it's not here is beyond me hold on a second uh, grid layout spacing
guys. Well, in perspective, the button should be showing up there, but apparently this grid layout is not grid laying out very well right now. Um, like if I, I, I guarantee you, if I put another damn button in here, that isn't that button. Yeah, I see that button works just fucking fine. Here, I'm just gonna grab this, copy paste. I don't know. The UI is always very finicky. It's been different every update they come out with anyway. So if I just remove this button here, this button, set it to the center here, and we are fine. Yeah, you just change the text name to small potion. This button's not casting anything there. Ba 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 ba. All right, now it's gonna work, obviously, because it's showing. That's strange on how the UI always seems to mess up on me in some perspective when I'm doing a video. So if we open this, I can click potion, and then we got small potion. It's just gonna flip between the two. I can buy the small potion, and then I can buy the potion as you guys can see um, boom sell them both back out here hope you guys enjoyed the video tutorial again sorry it was so long I figured that I would just throw in the, the second button to show you how easy it was to make a new button it should be as easy as copy and paste uh, but if you do receive the error where the button is like overlapping or you, you just don't see it in your list at all literally just create a fresh button and then copy and paste out the uh, on-click script that comes with uh, Plygame. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.